And now, BBC News. Live from Washington, this is BBC News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says a date has been set for the Rafa offensive. The UN's watchdog speaks out after drones hit a nuclear power plant in Ukraine. And a total solar eclipse sweeps across parts of North America, plunging millions into brief darkness. There it is! Wow, that is spectacular! Hello, I'm Michelle Flurry. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says a date has been set for an Israeli invasion of Rafa, Gaza's last refuge for displaced Palestinians. He did not reveal when that date is. Mr Netanyahu said invading the area is critical in order to reach his country's goals of releasing all of the hostages and destroying Hamas. However, as many as one million people are believed to be sheltering in Rafa, more than half of them children. Mr. Netanyahu is facing international pressure, including from the U.S., to not invade the city without a specific plan as to how to keep civilians there safe. His U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller responding to the Prime Minister's announcement. We have made clear to Israel that we think a full-scale military invasion of Rafah would have an enormously harmful effect on those civilians, and that it would ultimately hurt Israel's security. So it's not just a question of Israel presenting uh, a plan to us. We have made clear to them that we think that there is a better way to achieve what is a legitimate goal, which is to uh, degrade and dismantle and defeat the Hamas battalions that still remain in Rafah. North of Rafah, displaced Palestinians returned to complete ruin in Han Yunus on Monday. Their return comes as the Israeli military withdrew its troops from the area temporarily on Sunday. Our Middle East correspondent Lucy Williamson reports. For months, Khan Yunis was a city of targets. Its apartment blocks and hospitals seen by Israel as hiding places for Hamas. Residents returned today searching for their city homes inside the concrete mountains as Israel continued talks with Hamas on a ceasefire deal. The destruction is huge. Khan Yunis has been destroyed. It all needs to be rebuilt now. It's not suitable for animals to live in, let alone human beings. I wasn't expecting this destruction. Our biggest request is that they withdraw from our land. It's better for us to have tents on the rubble of our home rather than being displaced. Hamas launched rockets from Khan Yunis, the army said, even as its troops withdrew. It hit back with airstrikes. Israel's Prime Minister has promised total victory in this war, but Hamas is still fighting, and the withdrawal leaves just a skeleton Israeli presence across the middle of the strip. This is being presented as a temporary tactical withdrawal, and that buys Benjamin Netanyahu more time under American pressure to agree a ceasefire deal, and pressure from his own cabinet to keep the war going. He's framing this as a pause, not an end in the fighting, keeping both foreign and domestic allies on track. At Aho Planning Corps, we are working constantly to attain our objectives. First and foremost, the release of all of our hostages and the achieving of total victory over Hamas. This victory requires entering Rafa and eliminating the terrorist battalions there. This will happen. There is a date.